What is up people of the internet and welcome to Real Talk. This in-depth series explains the hustle grind and shares the thoughts of the people that you may or may not know of. It also gives you the insider look without all that clickbait concept. And like always, if you like anything, then like this. If you don't like it, well then, get out of here. But feel free to show your support to the guest as well as share your thoughts and comments below. Maybe I should just spin it on you and just introduce you and ask you questions. Nah, because nobody wants to know about me. No, I do. I'm not, I'm not even famous. Oh my god. <laughs> Remember when I took your hoodie when you were gone and I took a picture yo, of it? <laughs> yo, I, actually, I might actually have that picture. Dude, if you have it, that'd be so funny. So we kind of already started the show. Yeah. <laughs> oh, reminiscing a little bit. But this episode of Real Talk is with Helena, also known as Blonde Venom, <laughs> also known as Big Hal. <laughs> Uh, for some people that don't know who you are and what you're currently doing, uh, could you explain to them? Yeah, so I am the manager of content and marketing for Cavs Legion, which Cavs Legion is the professional NBA 2K team of the Cleveland Cavaliers. So um, I don't know if people know about the NBA 2K League, but the NBA made their own like esports league where there's 21 teams in it. So I do content for one of the 21 teams. When did you think that this could be something that could turn into a profession? Oh, God. I mean, I didn't think it could be real uh, ever. <laughs> like, you know, you always hope that it was, you know, going to be something. But, uh, you know, you and I especially know, like, when you go to event after event after event after event, you're sleeping on floors and you're, you know, driving cross country and you're just like, you know, what is happening? What are we doing? <laughs> and there's a lot of doubts at, at you know, at points, but, uh, you know, it finally became real, um, you know, when a lot of companies started investing and, you know, we saw, you know, a lot of big names coming in and I think it just kind of hit everyone where it's just like, holy, you know, this is not a hobby anymore. Like you're, you know, one day you're sitting there playing GBs when you're 14 and the next day, like, you know, you're playing for hundreds of thousands of dollars. Like it, it kind of seems like it happened like in a blink of an eye almost. Uh, what are some of your goals that you have in mind that you want to personally obtain? Yeah, um, I mean, specifically for me, a lot of my goals are, you know, going to be revolved around the Legion and making sure that, you know, my team is the best team in social media and content, like across the 21 teams. So, um, you know, I benchmark a lot of it, um, you know, with the other teams and, hey, do we have more engagements than them? Do we have more impressions than them? Is our content, you know, more engaging? Like, do people like it more? You know, are they drawn to it more? Um, so it's kind of hard to, uh, to say exactly what my goals are, but I just want to be the best team in the 2k league, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, it makes total sense that you're just trying to be the top dog in, in content production, right? And making sure everybody actually engages with that. That's exactly what anybody should be doing. I'm looking for a fan interaction and whatnot. Yeah. Cause I think we kind of led the charge, um, in videography. Um, we were the first team to bring on board. Uh, a videographer for the team and you know we got a really great guy his name is Patrick Bruder um, you know he's just super awesome he came from the COD community so he was already involved in esports so he, he kind of knew what he was doing <laughs> we didn't have to like teach somebody esports um, you know so he, he came in and everyone you know in the league was kind of just like whoa you know who is this guy and I'm like hey <laughs> I brought him on <laughs> yeah for real no he's the best though he uh he makes me look good that's the, that's the best way to like describe somebody that you put on like you can be proud of what they're doing but uh what do you what are the, the, your daily activities like what do you do you you get up brush your teeth go to work and what do you do like as a daily routine yeah so um usually it's like um like every monday we go over you know what the content schedule for the week is um so you know what are we doing this week and uh, whether it's like tweeting out or sometimes we do events, um, you know, sometimes we have tournaments or um, I, I know during the season, every Friday we did a youth camp. So we went to, um, you know, a youth basketball camp and we passed out our Cavs Legion t-shirts and we set up some Xboxes and, um, you know, put a bunch of social, you know, around that. Um, we gave away some copies of the game and uh, it was just a ton of fun. So it, it's kind of like, um, you know, every day I just want to think of what's going to set us apart. Um, so I, I get a lot of time in the off season to kind of work on that. Like, what are we going to do differently? Um, you know, than other teams do. Yeah. And especially when 
our season is so short. Um, like, I don't know if you know, but the 2K League has a pretty short season. I think uh, this year it's going to be uh, from April to August. And that's the only time where we get our players. Otherwise, they go home, uh, you know, for the rest of the year. So it's like planning out, okay, well, what do we want them all to do in those, you know, three, four months? Like, how much content can we capture with them before they go home that we have, you know, content for the off season then? So it's uh, right now it's a lot of planning more so. Yeah, and then just waiting for them to come back so you can recapture the next batch of content, right? Absolutely. Thinking back, let's go way back for a little bit here. Oh, let's man. Remin- Don't make let's me reminisce. do this. Don't make me do um, this. <laughs> when did you start being in a competitive gaming atmosphere? Um, I think it was like when I was um, probably around 15. There was a gaming cafe that opened like two minutes away from my house. It was called Game On in Pittsburgh. And I just thought it was the coolest thing in the world. Like I, I had been playing Black Ops just multiplayer, just like pubs, um, otherwise. But when I finally went to the gaming cafe, like I, you know, was playing zombies with everybody. And uh, the one owner was like, "I should make a tournament. I should run a tournament in Pittsburgh." And he was like, "You should just play in it." And I think he was probably just trying to get fifteen dollars out of me, but <laughs> but it worked. Uh, and like I joined it and it was a ton of fun and I ended up being, you know, semi decent at it. Um and he was like, We should do this next month. So every month he actually did Call of Duty tournaments and that's kind of how I started was on that really small scale where there's like four teams coming into Pittsburgh to play. And that's kinda of like how I made my start almost. Just like at a super small gaming cafe. Right, and and when I look back, I see you as one of the first in my eyes, I don't know if this is true, but one of the first female like competitive Call of Duty players. Oh, yeah, I wouldn't say the first, but definitely like first wave. Probably, yeah, first batch. Yeah, first, yeah, first batch. Like if we were if we were baking cupcakes, we'd be the first batch. But like, because <laughs> uh, like they actually um, started doing ladies nights, like online ladies nights, um, and there weren't a lot of teams because um, you know it was only teams of four at the time instead of teams of five and. You know, they wouldn't get a lot of teams, uh, but doing it every single week, you know, it finally grew to a point where they're like, you know, holy hell, we have 10 teams, (laughs) 40 girls. That's crazy. Right. (laughs) And we all started like meeting and connecting from there. So um, it was nuts to know that there were, you know, there were a lot more girls out there interested. It was just all about digging them out and finding them. Right. Where they could showcase what they have instead of being shy or, or maybe they didn't know about it. It's just more exposure, I guess, towards that. Yeah, it's all about creating opportunities for those people. Like, you know, there's probably a lot of girls like trying to Google those kinds of tournaments or where they could start. You know, not everybody has a gaming cafe that they could just go to. So, you know, what else do you do? Um, But I'm really glad that they, you know, gave girls like a platform, you know, to be able to like show off. No, that's diversity uh, in, in any type of atmosphere is great. But since you said like outside of what they know but what do you do outside of of your job besides play call of duty we all know you play call of duty still um definitely just i still play a lot of call of duty i'm still obsessed with zombies play a ton of blackout play league of legends all the time um but i'm a big documentary buff so my girlfriend and i are on a a documentary kick right now Uh, a lot of true crime (laughs) but uh yeah we're just addicted to netflix it's really bad Okay. Netflix. Documentaries. Go check them out. You already know. Tell me what? You don't like docs? Um, I do to a a degree. They have to be something I'm supremely interested in. Um, or I kind of like phase in and phase out, I guess. Oh my God. Uh, I do like learning about people and that's why you're on this podcast so I can see what you've been doing for the last couple of years. (laughs) What, uh... What Wait, we should talk about how you made me. I didn't. Hey, hey, hey chill, chill, chill. All right. I gave <laughs> Wait, you. You're just never gonna mention it. We're gonna revert back. I gave you the opportunity to advance your skill set to move on to where you're at now. And that's all I need. I won't take full credit for it because it had to be in you first to to get to that point. I remember when this man literally funded my girls' Call of Duty team to multiple events and. Didn't even have a hotel room for himself. I remember you slept on the chair, like literally next to us. And we were yeah. just like, do you want the bed? We could sleep on the floor. And you're like, no, I'm fine right here. This is fine. Yeah, I was, I was straight. 
I mean, you I think I had a hoodie on me. I was good. Yeah, no blanket, no pillow, just like straight up in a chair. That's good. <laughs> hey, I'm all Best for the people daughter. first. That's you know, what it is. I mean, I've always looked out for others before I looked out for myself. That's just the type of person I am. I mean, it's like the organizers like you who, you know, give the, those females like a chance to compete, you know, on the main stage. Like, you know, I wouldn't have had those opportunities to, you know, it takes a lot of money and a lot of people who believe in you. So, uh, yes, it does. It really, really does. And you had a whole staff behind us too, you know, like social media team, everything just like. You know, helping us along the way. Like I know it, it was, it was a lot of you, but it wasn't just you. You know, you I'm had crying. a lot of people behind you. I'm crying right now. Somebody uh, else realizes uh, it. Uh, but you realize right. it though, because you're on, you're on that end of the scale now, right? So you're on doing the social media and and the rest of the, the behind the scenes work. So you actually like, I think, realize what it took before, before esports were even a thing, right? Right. That was like, all right, cool. Call of Duty is awesome. Great. <laughs> And, yeah. and now you're now you're on that that back end on where the it's other like, side. all right, let me see yeah. the impressions, let us see all the engagements. Yeah, where it's like we want nothing but the best for our players, and like, right. you know, if one of my players was ever like, um, you know, if they ever needed anything, I'd be right there, you know, just like waiting on them hand and feet. So I I totally you know get that other side of it, but it takes a special kind of person, you know what I mean? Like it's I, it's not I something do. that everybody could do. Right. Yeah. It's it's uh. I don't know. It's just like you just treat them like family. Like you just, all right, I got you. Let me know if you need anything, and then if you don't need anything, then we cool. You know. <laughs> yeah, I remember um, when I was with Panda, and we were at the Columbus MLG Arena, and they were trying to qualify for a COD Champs, and I think I was like, uh, I was with like the owners, and I had this huge purse with me just for waters and bananas for the players <laughs> like and i would just like lug it back to the hotel and the venue and it would just be this whole case and there were other teams like man what like i wish i had that <laughs> like i'm like yeah man like you know i got get you come on a man. Team mom <laughs> right that's exactly what it is <laughs> as a team dad or mom that's... everybody needs one let's uh let's backtrack a little bit what it, what do you think i mean this is going to be cliche i know you're going to answer how you're going to answer it but maybe there's a different thought of it uh describe what your best experience so far in your career is yeah i mean best is a you know it's a hard word because like is it my favorite experience is it my most accomplished experience like there's there's a lot behind it um i feel like uh my favorite experience ever was definitely you know getting this job getting that letter back that was just like hey you made it um, was just really validating. Um, you know, definitely cried. Definitely was something that I was super happy about, ready to move to another city, ready to experience, you know, getting out of college and everything. Um, but I definitely think uh, playing, uh, playing like competitively was definitely um, a really good experience for me to understand like the business side of it all. Like I think I had to have that player experience to um, be better at my job currently. Like if I didn't play competitively, if I didn't understand, you know, what it took mentally, I think it would be a lot harder to do what I do now. So I think both of those experiences were, were awesome. Yeah, it makes sense. They kind of do go hand in hand. You can't, you can't understand what a player is going to want unless you're a player yourself, you know? Yeah. It's, um, and it's, it's crazy because, you know, all players are different and it's not like one size fits all, but, um, but at least you can kind of like, you know, understand their mentality more so, like that extremely competitive nature, um, you know, is something that like I really get and I understand that. Uh, like I understand their need to be the best. And, you know, even if they did well, like our team, you know, I think got, it was either, uh, uh, I think it was fourth overall at a, at a 17 teams and, you know, they were disappointed by it. And a lot of people were like, why are you disappointed? That's great. And I, I got it. You know what I mean? Right. Like they were like two points away from being in the finals. Um, and I know that was so heartbreaking to them. Um, and like, I understood it on their side and their level where everyone's just like, no, you guys did great. And they're like, no, man, we were so close. Right. And then the mom kicks in and be like, you guys are amazing. You're great. You know, we love, <laughs> we you. love you. We love everybody. <laughs> I did love my players though, dude. They were, they were so nice. 
Um, we really just got lucky with the guys that we had, like, and whatnot, but these guys were super chill and just, um, you know, they, they love to have a good time. <laughs> and I love that about them. They were awesome. Yeah, uh, especially how you just described it. If you build that relationship with a player, like, more of a, a friend family vibe rather than right. a co-worker vibe. Yeah, and it's all about, like, trust. Like, they need to trust us and we need to trust them. Um, you know, you can't really do your job without that connection, um, especially since esports is so, um, how, what's the word? It's it's very personal. Um, it's very relationship oriented. Uh, you know, you can't be bad with people and be in esports. So, right. yeah, you need those connections. Right, and even if, even if that relationship doesn't work out, uh, you still want to keep that positive attitude regardless because at the end of the day it could wind up you working again you know instead of burning a bridge type of atmosphere uh, oh definitely yeah it just and you know there's always going to be those bad things that happen and there's always going to be some sore tastes but you know it's about what you do from there how you move on from there right constant communication that's what i tell everybody if if i don't know what you're thinking or what you're like looking for then i can't help like same right. reason like on the other foot, if I don't talk to you, then I won't know what you're trying to do. Right. Absolutely. Um, speaking of this small, small uh, world of esports, like you <laughs> mentioned, um, how do you feel about the current world? You kind of described a little bit earlier, like you felt like it's in a good place. Um, oh yeah, definitely. How do you think uh, your specific feel, like 2K, right? NBA 2K. Um, can grow to that level of like a, a League of Legends or a Dota. Yeah, I mean, um, I think that 2K is not necessarily going to be the same as like a, a League or a CSGO or an Overwatch. I think that they're trying to be very unique. I don't think they're trying to follow in any other League's footsteps. Like this is definitely like a League of their own. Um, they have their own demo, you know, their own targets their own goals um, that don't necessarily match with like traditional esports leagues. Uh, it definitely isn't a good spot. All of these leagues are in a very good spot. I think esports is super healthy right now and you know, it's only going up from here. Um, it definitely hit mainstream. It went from like even a couple years ago, you know, just being kind of like there were a lot of stigmas behind it. Um, it's definitely a lot cooler now, you know, to like esports, even in like my college classes, like, you know, people kind of knew what it was and understood it and just thought it was kind of cool where like when I was in like middle school or high school, it's it was just kind of like, oh, you know, that kid's a dork, that kid's a gamer. You know, it was very dorky. Right. But it's not really so dorky anymore, which is awesome. Right. I, I love going to like, like describing what I do <laughs> to somebody and it's like, wait, what? You work with kids that play video games for... for <laughs> Like, yeah, that's what I yeah, do. They're like, like, wait. Like describing your job to an Uber driver is like the worst oh, thing. Oh, the greatest experience <laughs> ever. I love that. I mean, I traveled like 35 times last year. Yeah. And just, just every Uber driver, like, hey, what are you in town for? Uh, I'm in town for video games. Wait, what do you mean? You travel for video games? I was like. Yeah, but even even the reactions now from them are like a lot better than they were before. So like now it's like uber drivers are like wow or like one dude handed me his card because he did like a small radio show he's like oh, he wow you. you guys yeah i know but <laughs> for real but like before it's like oh that's nice you know and now right, it's like, right. oh wow that's cool and then you get the you get the the drivers that don't want the conversation but they ask like, <laughs> oh my god i can't believe i asked him this now i'm gonna get some long-winded answer yeah for real <laughs> And then I go into the whole explanation of broadcasting, like live broadcasting, oh, and they're like, oh my goodness, what? There's like uh, TV players, people playing video games on TV type thing? I was like, <laughs> yeah, this is uh, 2018 we're living in, and, and it's, I don't think it's going to go anywhere anytime soon. Definitely not. Um, but in two years, personally, where do you see yourself? Ooh, that's such a good question. Um. I feel like the esports landscape is just changing so much that it's it's hard to see. But I mean, I'd still love to be with the Cavs. I love this organization. I'd love to like grow within the organization um, because I really do love living in Cleveland. I never thought that I would say that growing up in Pittsburgh. The two cities have like crazy rivalries. Um, so if you're like from Pittsburgh, you go ew Cleveland, or if you're from Cleveland, you go ew Pittsburgh. Um, 
And then, you know, I moved here and I'm like, guys, this isn't bad. This is actually pretty sweet. <laughs> um, you know, and the fact that I live in a, in a really cool city, you know, working full time in esports, like I, I'd love to stay here. So I'd love to see myself here in two years, but, you know, hopefully growing more as a person. Hey, that's one thing. Like, I've only been a part of two esports orgs my whole seven plus years, you know. Rest in peace, um, relapsed. Yeah. Shout out to you, big dog. Um, <laughs> Man, that was fun though. Like it was, it was a super fun ride. Yeah, that was uh, where I first got my experience with working with creatives and like working with videographers right. and graphic designers. Um, right, you used to run the. Uh, you did what you're doing now. You did Real it on the, the smaller stage. Yes, and it. Uh, wow. You know, and it actually uh, helped me with a lot of contacts, like um, you know. Even, you know, for Legion, like, we have to find graphic designers, we have to find photographers, and, you know, people look to me and they're like, all right, you know, who do we pick? And I'm like, well, now I got a list of people, you know, now I have a lot of people I've worked with before, you know, specifically as esports creatives. So, definitely got my start there. Shout out, Maze. What, what was wrong with my graphics? Why didn't you hit me up yet? Oh, yeah? You're expensive. <laughs> Cavs Legion, I'm looking, man. Hit me up. <laughs> I'll do it for free, man. Oh, please. Let's, plug yourself, uh, plug yourself, plug yourself. I know, man. I'm trying family. to get out here. <laughs> it's eSports, right? I'm trying to get out. Nah. Right? That's what, <laughs> it's what it's all about. Um, any, uh, with the new people coming into the scene that might not be like, they don't know what to do yet, you know? Like, how do I start here? What do I do? How do I get to where I want to go? Uh, what is the one piece of advice you can give to them um, trying to get to a larger picture of which you're at um currently and and maybe they want to get to that yeah i mean um one of my pieces of advice would be never forget anybody you know big or small like don't forget people don't forget their names or their faces um you know everybody um uh, you know you want to make relationships with everybody that you can um and basically i remember this one time uh, there was this kid who was pretty young and he was interviewing me for like an online esports position like a while ago. Um, and even though he only interviewed me for like 30 minutes, I always remembered his name. I always remembered his face and followed him for forever. And, you know, he it was a couple years later and he tweeted at me. He's like, hey, I've always wanted to, to meet you, you know, and I, I tweeted back at him. I'm like, do you remember? you know, on this date and this time you actually interviewed me and he freaked out. He was like, what? Uh, and he like completely forgot. And I'm like, no, man, like we definitely have met, you know, <laughs> and it'd be cool to talk to you again. And he was like, wow. Um, but people really like take that to heart. Um, right. You know, like they really appreciate that, um, you know, so just don't forget people. It uh, it'll really work to your favor and, you know, it'll help you a lot. Good piece of advice. Um... I also like... The other thing I would say is like, write everything down, like write all of your experiences down and all of your accomplishments because you're going to forget it or you're going to think that it's not very important. But for employers and for people who are going to look at that, like they, they might think it's important, you know, like uh, even if you're just running relapse studios for, <laughs> you know, a, you know, like a team of small graphic designers for a little bit, like write it down, document it, you know. Do whatever, do whatever it takes to like put it on paper because you know somebody's gonna look at that and be like, "Wow, that's really cool," even if you don't think it is. Right. That's that's one thing that I always do uh, with all my trips. Um, this is totally different, but I always document it. I'm I'm a film guy, so I usually record a lot of stuff. Um, but I always plan to take pictures of me in a different setting, so people know, or even my kid, for instance, will know what I've done. Uh, with my life and and maybe propel them to do it as well that's super cool yeah yeah you're just a super cool person um <laughs> any, any last thoughts just anybody that has been listening to you talk about your whole journey from where you were to now where you are and what you have planned on the future definitely um you know a lot of people have to start small and so don't you know don't worry if that's you like you know, you might not get something big right off the bat. I definitely did not get something big off the bat. Like, you know, you're going to have to work pro bono for a while. I worked, you know, pro bono in esports for a long time. You did too, Maze. Like, 
you know, we all still do. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? Like we all put in that time and that effort. So, you know, if you're still chugging along, like, you know, don't give up on it. Like keep going. It's it's just you got to put that time in. All about the grind. All about the grind. Real talk. Real talk, right? Last portion of the show, shout yourself out. Where can people find you at? Wow. <laughs> Follow me on Twitter. I'm verified. <gasps> check mark. Wow. Check mark, baby. My Twitter is at Blonde Venom. If you don't know how to spell blonde, just try your best. <laughs> Type it on your phone. I'll correct you know. All right. Well, thank you for coming on the show and uh, finally letting me know what you've been up to for these couple of years. It's been. It's been a little little time. We used to rock almost every every day. Literally every day. But like besi- before uh, we even started the show, I was talking like people just grow up and grow apart. But I mean, still still maintain the relationships. Definitely, like still keeping in touch with those people. Like, uh, you know, like I said before the show, like you know, moving is crazy. Like I know that people have real lives and they do stuff and they move and they, you know, like. They, they have real life events going on, but you always have to find that way to, to come back to people and don't expect, you know, other people to always like reach out, like make sure you're also the one who's like, you know, extending halfway. Yeah. Like me, I've been extended for a while. Come on now. I tried to link up with you months ago. I know. Just to even talk. We all have to meet you up with. Check the, check the DMs. What? Check what? the DMs. There's not a lot of them the lately. DMs, bruh. You know you know I always have time for you. Yeah, but we, we link up. We got this. We link up. All right, guys. Thank you for listening to the show. Uh, follow Big Hal, Helena, <laughs> Blonde Venom. All the links are in the description below. And I'll see you guys on the next one.